If you set it and forget it, you will forget your client. Absolutely. Set it and forget it is like, bye client, why have one at all? Exactly. Can, can I waive it completely? I don't want to pay your BS fee to get a fake appraisal. If there was a free trial out there, I tried it. Yeah, you saw them all. <sighs> and then I was like, wait a second, I love this. But they think, oh, well, I can just ask the question here, how much is this and condo then it's fee? a slippery slope. Before you know it, you're at the front door with some man you never heard of before <laughs> who's telling you that he has to sell you the house. Hi, Alyssa. Hey, Katie. We're motivated by food today. Yes. Today, it's episode 252, Anti-Automation. Yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily what I'm going to call it. What do you think? I think it's accurate, but people are probably going to be like, what is this about? And then they're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is very needed, a very <laughs> needed topic. Right. While it may not be the most self-explanatory topic, it is much needed. I have no idea if we're going to go in the same direction with this. So okay. can't wait. Can't okay. wait. Um, but it makes me think of, is it Staples that has the easy button? Oh, yes. Like the big red button. I wish we had a big red button on the on the desk and be like, easy, easy button. I feel like that's the quest for the realtors out there. Mm -hmm. They're just looking for the easy button. They're like, how can I be in real estate but not work? I don't want to work. Mm -hmm. I just want to make this one touch. I have heard Set many. Set it and forget it. <laughs> yes. I have heard many people, mostly like not saying teams, everyone in a team is like this, but most of my friends that are like team leaders or some sort of something like that have said something along the lines of, yeah, I would just like to not sell real estate or I just don't want to. And I'm like, but you have, okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, I think any Facebook group that you go in, this is where the who has the best CRM yeah, comes how do you, in how handy. How do you use your CRM? And you think, why are people so obsessed with finding the best CRM? And it's because I think they are trying to find the machine, yeah. the app that's going to do their real estate business for, for them. them. Yeah, they want the easy button. They want the one, how can the we magic one. Yeah, but you can't automate all of your work. Correct. Their work is work. Mm -hmm. And if a computer could do your job, then you wouldn't have one. Yes. And there are lots of computers doing lots of parts of our jobs mm -hmm. and more every day. And it just, when I was preparing mentally for this topic, it just brings me back to ultimately there is no automation, no CRM, no software, no website, no AI that can provide your specific buyer or seller advice. Correct. And in Louisiana, you become an agent, and I assume this is in every state, but the way our law is written, you become someone's agent as soon as you offer them advice. Mm -hmm. So agency disclosure not buyer representation agreement but agency disclosure you're, should be you're the, signed yes you're you ha you owe them the certain duties mm -hmm. once you have offered advice that's mm -hmm. when you've basically engaged in your agency relationship yes. right and i don't care what you say zillow or whatever can't give your client advice well, we've seen people try to replace us already sure. with robots you yeah. know Things that, like, what was that big program they rolled out that failed? Um, oh, like the iBuyer thing? Yeah, the iBuyer wasn't a big success. Oh, and success. then there was going to be, like, a robot that showed you the houses? Or, like, yeah. And I know they have things out there, like, scan your driver's license and get in the house. They've well, got it literally around the block. Yeah. From I mean, here. From right. my house. Yeah. A whole neighborhood full of rentals where you just go show it to yourself. That is crazy. Not even, like, that. So, look, I mean, and, and, and then we're going to get to some helpful automation that I made some yeah. notes of. But if you're afraid that a computer can do your job, then you're not doing enough. Mm -hmm. Like if you're like, oh, well, a computer can do everything I'm doing, mm -hmm. then maybe we need to add in more touch points and higher level service to our clients. Yeah. And build relationships, mm -hmm. which is why I think neither of us feel super concerned about being replaced because you're building your business off of your pe your relationships with your people. Right. And knowing that seeing the situations I have been in just this year alone, I'm like a robot would never be able to figure this out. No. 
there, are you looking for ways to save time and money in your business? Email Templates 101 is the communication system you need to bring ease and efficiency to managing your transactions and clients. Save time and avoid mistakes, all while providing a high level of service for your buyers and sellers. In Email Templates 101, you'll get 13 downloadable buyer templates ready for your personal touches. And 19 downloadable seller templates, plus six attachment checklists. Head over to hustlehumblypodcast.com slash courses to get yours today. And not just, I know we're talking a lot about you know, a robot showing houses or, you know, submit your offer here and we'll just do it this way online. But, you know, I think about when I was newly licensed. Right. And automation was becoming sort of a new thing. CRMs were becoming more of a thing. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought that's what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Like I should do this, you know. And I remember when I finally had my email template set up, I was really looking for a program that would automatically do these things. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was awful. Right. The automated system was not you can't just set it and forget it. Here's no. why. <laughs> closing dates change. Right. Okay, I don't want the approaching closing email to go to my seller when we just had to do a surprise 6-week extension. Right, it's inappropriate. You're yes. going to make them angry. Yes, it would actually and it it has and you also have to edit all of these things yourself. For the situation. There are things that an assistant cannot do or know. Yeah. Even a li- live living breathing assistant. Right, it will be hard. There are things that I still need to do. To make this a successful transaction. That's why it's hard and there's so much disconnect and it's so hard to develop a relationship when uh, a buyer or seller is thrown into the system where it's like, this person handles this part of the transaction. (laughs) This person handles a different part. That even, it's we're not even talking about a robot. We're just talking about, well, the system is set up for Mm -hmm. your pre- you know, close your post close. You're you're gonna do inspection. Well, who am I talking to now? Right. I don't trust any of you because I don't know any of you. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, why would I listen to you? And that's why I liked your method of your. You were always the first line of contact to your clients, not your assistant. No matter what they were yeah. doing, they weren't meeting your clients or Never. talking directly like, to them. My when I have had an assistant. It's like you, they, my clients never even know about them yeah. because they're not there for my clients. Right. They're there for me and yeah. they're there for assigning things online and, yeah. and delegating paperwork. They are not there. Like my clients don't even need to know about the assistant because it's of no benefit to them. Correct. And I delegate a good amount, but there is a good amount that cannot be delegated. Yeah. Now, I think that there is a difference between using a system. Mm-hmm. And automating. I'm doing my air quotes, automate. Yeah. Right? Like you have email templates which speed up your process. Even though you feel like you need to be the one having the contact with the buyer or seller, you know the, the ins and outs of that transaction. You quickly pull up that email. You can scan it really quick and know where to put in the right words mm-hmm. and be done with it. Mm-hmm. And you know when it's time to send it. Right. The CRM would start screaming at you and being like, alert, call Susie. You haven't talked to her in one month. I'm like, <laughs> I don't, I don't. I don't need to talk to Susie right now. every month. Because here's the other thing. What if yesterday you talked to Susie on Facebook? Right. It's It it eliminates the part of your life where you're actually living. Mm-hmm. Like maybe you saw Susie at school yesterday. I don't also need to. Yes. And I could just click the button that says completed. But at the same time, the list for me when I had the CRM. Oh, gosh. It got so long that I was just like, failure. Fa- you're a failure. I'm a failure. You're a failure. I you're can't a failure. Keep up. Yes. You are a failure. Every single red person on there was I was a failure. And not just the systems like that, but when I was newer, the few things that I went to on accident, not realizing <laughs> not realizing what they were, oh, no. where the actual quote unquote coach or speaker would tell you. And if you can't do it, it's your fault. Like, right. if your CRM gets backed up, well, that's on you. Yeah. Or, and it's like, wait, but maybe that's not the right automation that I needed. Right. Simple. If you can't use a simple system, you don't need to be adding one with more bells and whistles. Mm-mm. You need to master the simplest version of this job. The simplest then layer. Yes. You can layer on top. Yes. If you 
if you use the CRM and it works great for you and you don't have any stress or anxiety about it, live it up. Mm -hmm. Live it up. If it's the place where your people are and then you don't forget them, great. But if you couldn't even get them all onto one spreadsheet and simply fill out the column that said when you last talked to them, I don't know that you're ready for a CRM that's going to make you try to talk to them every other month. And remember all the birthdays, all the anniversaries. Like I, My other thing is collecting data just for the sake of collecting data is not helpful to you. Do you need to know everyone's dog's name, when their mother passed away, when their kids' birthdays are, what school they go to? Probably not. Mm -mm. Because... Sometimes people are also creeped out yes. when you know too much about them that you never spoke of. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, oh, do we really need to? Mm -hmm. If And I've had clients many times say, wow, you have a great memory. Because I do. So mm -hmm. I'll be like, hey, how's the, your, your corgi? Mm -hmm. They're like, wow, you remember that? I'm like, yeah. Because we have a natural connection and a relationship based off of us talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Not based off of me being like, fill out this questionnaire and I will upload it into the cloud. I know. Even one time my mom was like, oh, I forgot to tell you happy anniversary. I'm like, well, you didn't marry me. Tana right. Did. You Why know, you like you don't have to remember. I don't expect my mother to remember, no. let alone my realtor who sold me my house five years ago to no, tell me so happy strange. wedding anniversary. That's weird. And that's another weird one that's common is the wedding anniversary. I'm like, y'all, are you really keeping up with your buyers and sellers so well that you know that their marriage is a happy, pleasant place right now? <laughs> Or that it still exists. What if they've been divorced? Yeah. It's a little But I'll remember that date forever. Well, don't worry. And the my CRM, CRM will remember it for the you. The CRM will automatically send a happy anniversary mm. card to the divorced couple. That's what even, automation does. Right. Even though you knew they were divorced. Yes, you knew they were divorced, but you forgot to update the fancy CRM. CRM. That's not a happy anniversary card. That would be terrible. So tacky. <laughs> Whoops. <sighs> Whoops. Um, I do believe you can use tools to make your work easier. So tools are fine. And I do think there are types of automation that are great that you can use, but you still have to do the work to implement them and to use them well. I always think about those buyers that came to me and said, you know, will you be our agent? We're trying to buy a house. We do want to let you know we had an agent before. Okay. We are terminating that relationship. And of course, I'm like, why? I have to know why. I want to make sure that, you know, we're, I need to interview you as well and set expectations properly. And they said, well, he set us up on this automated house search. Okay. And it sent us about 50 houses a day. In separate emails? To our emails. Some had five, some had 10, you know, just all grouped, just several emails a day. Definitely not the criteria we were looking for. Um, and when we talked to him about it. He didn't fix it. He was like, well, some of the stuff that you're looking for doesn't necessarily have a specific search field. field. So we're going to have to Filter. check each house. And they were like, well, we can't check. He should have filtered more. Right. Uh, really should have right, filtered because more. They, because they expressed that this was a problem. Yes. For them. Yes. They didn't want to do the filter. They were even like, this is, that's why we hired you. Oh okay. Oh my gosh. So I was very, and this is, this happened, gosh, before I had kids is when I got these clients. Wow. It was like 2015, 2016. Mm -hmm. Since then, when I have a buyer looking for a specific house, in the beginning, the first thing I do is set up a search and it only comes to me. Okay. And then I tweak as necessary. Okay. When I realize the emails are not coming as annoyingly abundant, I then Make add it to where it goes to me and the client. Okay, right. And I tell the client, hey, I've tweaked the search as much as I can. Now, when a new listing meets your criteria, it comes to both of us. Right. Please know it's not going to be perfect because it is a computer. Yeah. But I have it pretty specific, so you shouldn't be getting a ton of junk. Right. If you notice that something keeps popping up that you really don't like, a certain subdivision, I can fix that. So just let me know. But just know it comes to both of us now, so we both see it. I didn't just want to – if you set it and forget it, you will forget your client. Absolutely. Set it and forget it is like, bye client. I like that you do that with the really active clients. 
Not every buyer. Yeah. It, no, no, no. Because that would be too much. Right. But the ones that are really actively looking. Correct. You're getting the email as well. And if you've watched the Trello video, you can just Google like Alyssa Hustle Humbly Trello yeah, yeah, video. It's, it's, it's on YouTube. Free. Mm-hmm. How I use my Trello. Right now, my Trello buyer column is I actually probably really need to go clean it out. It is very full. Yeah. But I would say I have four that I'm actively going out to show. Yes. And when I notice someone has gone quiet, I cu- I check in, recheck their time frame, how are things looking, and then may decide to take me off. Yeah. And just leave them on it. Right. It's not, this is not it just urgent. Goes, yes. Houses are still going to mm-hmm. them. They're still on my Trello. Yeah. So I know to check up with them. But I don't need to receive the emails because they have decided to renew their lease for six more months. Right. So I don't need to keep up with those houses. That makes sense. But I think that so many agents go wrong in setting up a search and and having things automatically sent to their clients. Yeah. Without any real filtering. You got to filter it. Or Pretty else good. Going to get annoyed. Yes. Or or you need to set it where it's not going. At, there's options in our MLS where it's immediately. So when a new listing comes on immediately, there's daily, there's weekly, there's mm-hmm. you can pick how many days a week. You can do a monthly. Like mm-hmm. figure out how much, and then they get a long email maybe with a bunch once a week instead of every single day or every five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a little task. Okay. Because I figured we're talking about automation. I went to our friend ChatGPT. Okay. And I asked ChatGPT how realtors can automate their business. Oh, my. Uh-huh. Um, and this is what ChatGPT told me. What realtors did the computer say? Can, re, the computer's going to tell me how to keep their job. Okay. Realtors can automate various aspects of their business to streamline processes, save time, and improve efficiency. Mm-hmm. Here mm-hmm. are several ways they can do so. So several. I'm going to give you a list of, hold please, I think ChatGPT likes, oh, even numbers. 12 items. Okay. That the chat GPT AI machine told us you, Alyssa Jenkins, could streamline your processes, improve efficiency I using you these were, automations. I thought you were going to say like 150 things. No, 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 no. This is acceptable. And I'm going to let you weigh in on them. Okay? okay. Number one. Well, number one, your good friend, the customer relationship management software, CRM. C-R-M. Okay. Um, and it just... Tells us we can use that to follow up with our clients, track interactions, automate follow-up emails. And um, my note to this was sometimes it creates more overwhelm, as we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. So, sure. Can it automate things? Yes. Would Do we either of us use it? No. And if you've been a listener for a long time, you know this. But the spreadsheet that I use came because... (laughs) I had put all of my people into a spreadsheet so that I could do all the free trials of the CRM. Right, easily. Most of them allow you to do some sort of free trial. So I could just take my spreadsheet, mm-hmm. upload it to the CRM, mm-hmm. use it for two weeks, decide if I liked it. Uh, if there was a free trial out there, I tried it. Yeah, you saw them all. <sighs> and then I was like, wait a second, I love this spreadsheet. I just keep going back to this. I can make notes on this and keep track. And then when I need to mail Christmas cards, I can just print labels. You're like, why Why make this harder than why it needs to be? Why am I making this so hard? Because I thought that's what I should be doing. Right. Okay. Are you ready for number two? Mm-hmm. Email marketing automation. Set up automated email campaigns for lead nurturing, sending newsletters, market updates, or promotions. I do not like automated newsletters. Please do not use those. I have never read one that was good. Never. Never. Mm -mm. Have I sent them in the past? Yep. Mm -hmm. When I was at Remax and everyone was in my database, you just hit the little button and everyone gets the newsletter. And I don't know that anyone was offended, but they also just ignored it. Yeah. It's like you're like, like, go away. It's like a gnat. It's an annoyance. Like, get, get away from me. It's usually it. not valuable or no. helpful no. or interesting. But we have a whole episode on newsletters mm-hmm. and email. I have seen some newsletters that were great. Yeah. That were they had some personal information that had some information about their town that had maybe the weekend events, things that your 
sphere would actually want to hear from you. And you can tell which ones are written by the person. And which ones are written by the machine. One of my friends is in New Orleans and I got added to her email list and I was like, ugh. And then I opened it and was like, oh, this is so cute. So cute. <laughs> I ended up keeping it because she's sharing all these like French Quarter listings. That's great. And all these things. I just, I don't know. You're when like, I opened her it. email, I just glance at it, look Love at the it. pictures and delete it, you know? So we're saying automated newsletter, bad. Written by you, good. Market Not update. only good, but actually valuable. Yeah, agree. Value. What about market updates? Yeah. Well, you send your subdivision report to keep in touch with your old buyers, yes, right? I do have an automated subdivision report that goes to clients once a month just for the subdivision they live in, mm -hmm. showing all the activity yeah. and sort of some gra helpful graphs showing days on market. Okay, and we like that. Valuable, easy. Once a month. Once a month. And right. I set it up and it goes to them forever. Email campaigns for lead nurturing. I have some, if you wrote them, if you wrote every word of them and it's truly how you would talk to someone, mm -hmm. then I, I could maybe see where it would work. If they are just a machine annoying people via email, mm -hmm. I would think twice. Like, just put yourself in your buyer or seller's shoes. Would you want to get this email? Would it bother you? Does mm -hmm. it sound like you? Mm -hmm. Okay, number three on the list. Social media management tools. Huh. Calm down. Oh, my gosh. You got so worked up. Schedule posts in advance, monitor engagement, analyze performance, um, using tools like a Hootsuite or a Buffer See, or whatever. See, the thing is – the scheduling is fine. Mm -hmm. It's creating. The things, yes. It's it's what are you posting? Well. If you are copy and pasting and not making it yourself. And what's you're, the point? You're paying a company to do this. Oh, gosh. Just don't. Just don't. If you're not in it, it's not going to connect with your people. No. Go follow Modern Agent Social Club if you need tips on how to put yourself in your content. Mm -hmm. Right? Because they will. All these companies will post it for you. Yeah. They'll make these ch cheesy reels for you. <laughs> like, if it's boring, no one's going to watch it. What's the point? Mm -hmm. What's the point? Okay, number four on the list, transaction management software. Utilize software specifically designed for real estate transactions to automate paperwork reminders and communication between the parties involved. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, I don't use one. So you don't need it. You don't need that? No. Oh. And not because my brain is so good. No. Because it's not. Where are you tracking this? Whenever I have a new contract, mm -hmm. I put the important dates in my calendar. Oh. And it just tells you when it's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I have my email templates mm -hmm. that I know when to send. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. your job is to follow the transactions. Yes, I don't certainly don't want a computer following the transactions. They're not going to get it right every time. Mm -mm. Um, now, I will say that there are CRMs that mesh these things together. I find more and more, I think they're starting to do, like, you could get your transaction management along with your CR, all of the things, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Look, again, if it's, and they always, this quote, which one is the best system? The one that you'll use. Yes, well, yes, Neither yes. of us. Want to use the guy that's yelling at us from the, you know, computer screen, mm -hmm. the long list of redlined items that we didn't do. So, you know, my company that I've been with since 2011 just got bought. Right. New company who hasn't really – we ha it's like a 18 – Month. You have a long transition. We have a long transition period. So nothing has really changed just for me. just you in. Yes. Okay. But the messages I've gotten from people at this new company that are in other parts of the country mm -hmm. that maybe listen to the podcast, I've gotten so many messages that are like, I think you'll really like this one. I'll be curious to see what you think because okay. it's so simple and mm -hmm. clean. I think you might actually like it. Maybe you will. And so I'm like, it's been so long since I have tried a CRM or mm -hmm. anything like that, but I'm kind of excited just to see, like, people who know how I operate are I like, wait. I just want your feedback. I fundamentally think it won't, you won't. So the other problem I have with it is that in the past, I mean, I've been with one company for 13 years, okay? Yeah. 12 years. Even when I got really into something, it changed. Right. 
And then I was having to well, start always from scratch. Improving it. Always improving. Or companies, tech companies get bought all the time. Yeah. So what was happening is I was dedicating all this time mm-hmm. to setting up this system. But do you know what never got messed up and never had to be redone? Your spreadsheet? My spreadsheet yeah. and my Trello. Right. It never got touched. Yeah. My business is just there how it needs to be, and it's under my control. I know. So even if I like what a company is offering, it's not that valuable to me. Right. Even if I like it. Yeah, because you're actively participating in all of your transactions. I am. Um, It's fascinating, too. We'll see how it goes, because it is a tech company. Yeah. You've you've been bought by it, of all the things. A big tech company. You've been bought by a tech company. But it sounds like it's simple tech. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. We're going to stay tuned. Our database template is the key to repeat and referral business, and it's free for you. Your database is the foundation of successful business, and we want to help you get started. Not sure who you would put on the list? Don't worry. We have ideas for you. Grab your free database template and who do you know list at hustlehumblypodcast.com slash start here. All right, next on the list, automated showing systems. I mean, I'm going to give this one an A+. Plus. I Yay, want pe- showing I wa- time. I want people to click the button and schedule a showing. Yes. I don't I don't want to have to make those it phone calls. It makes me think when listing agents used to have to leave the keys at their office and meet people for opening doors, like no Can supra. you even imagine? And now this little box, you know who opens it. When? When, how long they uh-huh. were there. Like, yep. you know, all. it's very, it's safer than us going. Safe, very safe. Next, virtual tours and open houses. So doing any type of Zoom or specialized video tour, uploading that to whatever system's going to host it. I don't know if your MLS takes it or not. But, but I don't know that that's automated. Like you still have to. I guess to- what they're trying to say is that you're not going to go do the showing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my word. You're not going to go. You're not going to go to the open house. So when someone's like, oh. You're not going to hold an open house. You're just going to put it virtually out in the out in the cloud, out in the world. This is funny. Is this a thing? That's what Chad GBG says. Okay. How you can automate your real estate business. All right. Automated property valuation tools. I can't even get it out without laughing. Okay. My dad. The real yes. estate appraiser. Yeah, well, he's mm, okay. he is seeing it's happening in banks already. They're going to get rid of appraisals. I 100% believe this. And I think that it's going to be problematic. I mean, especially it's here's the thing. There are situations, many situations where a human being needs to look at that house. Yeah. Um almost all of the situations. I had a my client, one of my buyers received an email saying that They did not receive an appraisal. So lately, some of my clients who are putting at least 20% down have been receiving appraisal waivers. If you put 20% down, which this makes complete logical sense to me. The bank is releasing some of their liability, right? Yes. Because you've already got enough money in it that surely you're not buying it for over 20% value. Off, They feel safe. Yeah. And they have a little zestimate of sorts <laughs> that makes them feel right like it's a safe like, number. Okay, sure. You have enough money to put down. It looks to be in line with the computer. Mm-hmm. We'll just waive this. Yeah. Well, I just got a different kind of request where wow. the lender said, hey, we ran it through the automated underwriting system uh-huh. and it is not waived for a appraisal, but you have the option to pay for an AVM, okay. automated Valuation. Automated valuation. Anyway, a a basically AI appraisal where there's still a fee, but it's significantly less, like 100 bucks. Or you could pay the real appraiser 600 and he'll go out and do the appraisal. But it's up to you what you want to do. How did this go down? Um, I think he chose the automated one. You had the buyer or the I seller? I had the buyer. Okay. And I saw the lender emailed him, copied me. How did you feel that the value came back? Not yet. We just got this email. Oh, but oh. I think it'll be fine. But How much was your buyer putting down? A lot. More than 20? Like 25 or 30. So weird that they didn't waive it completely. Yeah. So that's why I thought this is a different email. Usually it's waived or not waived. But now <gasps> it's this new option. You know why? Of like an automated. You know why? Because why? the bank can make $100 now. <gasps> Instead of paying an appraiser six hundred or paying no one anything because you waived the appraisal, it's now banks are like, way. "Well, look, we've got this AI. Let's just charge them a hundred bucks for this." Mm-hmm. It's just another way for the bank to make money, probably. Yeah, it's 
I don't think it's needed. Because if he's putting 25% down, it's not needed. Why have one at all? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Can can I waive it completely? Mm-hmm. I don't want to pay your BS fee to get a fake appraisal. <sighs> right. <sighs> but my dad, you know, my sister is a nurse. Right. Um, nurses work three days. Her position is... Three 12 hour shifts a week is considered okay. full time. All right. And then she would pick up extra, but she ended up getting her appraiser's license. Uh-huh. So she is a nurse right. and an appraiser with my dad. Okay. And my dad's always like, I'm so glad she's still a nurse because I just don't know what the future holds for appraisers. Yeah. And I'm not quite as worried, but when I got this email, I'm like, I mean, I'm a thousand percent worried about an appraiser. Well, now I, I am. I would not tell anyone to become an appraiser right now. Right. Yeah, because there's no way that a banks are going to continue. And not to- because I don't think they're valuable. I think it's just a dumb decision being made to cut out the human and allow a robot to put computer data fair. together. Completely fair. However, that's also assuming that realtors don't know how to price houses and do market values. Do you know what I mean? Like the appraiser is a check and balance to me. That's a little weird. Like as a as a realtor, I did all of those market reports. Mm-hmm. I should have done them well enough that it'd be pretty close to what the appraiser comes back at. And the only time I've ever called an appraisal for a listing is when it was just like well, you have no clue it what was to pull, so what strange. Comes to pull. Yeah. Yes, it was a strange house in a neighborhood that it did not conform to. I knew people were going to question me on how did you price this. Yeah. Having a form signed by so a human. So maybe some appraisers will hang around yeah. for that, like, third-party check. Mm-hmm. Or, like, maybe they'll still do, like, like, like divorce settlements or mm-hmm. secessions. Like, they'll still value property that isn't – They just won't be used as much in a real estate transaction, I, I which think, is crazy. I, I think it's definitely going to happen. Um, okay. Document management systems. You know, cloud-based document management systems to store and organize contracts, agreements, and other important paperwork. I'm for this. Yeah, but to me, I'm like, I still have to put it in there. Yeah, I agree, agree, agree. (laughs) Sometimes I feel like that is also combined with your CRM and your transaction management. Like, there is software that does all of that together. Mm -hmm. I like that it broke it out. Whatever. I mean, I use Dot Loop. Um, It's nice to have it there. Sure. We use Dot Loop, but I love it. But I will say this. Dot Loop also has some of that functions of, like, transaction management where I could put in the title office and the lender and all this other information. And I'm like, I don't have time for this. And also I'm a little skeptical about how much data we're giving away. A hundred. Yeah. Like, what are y'all going to now do with this data? How are you going to use it to cut me out? I have to be a little bit self I started thinking about that too when I realized like some of my clients were getting emails, not from me, not from things I set up, but like some even more like company branded or something. And it's like, even if your company, your company owns that CRM. Yeah. And if it's not your brokerage company, it is the company that owns the CRM. And you just gave them 500 names, email addresses, addresses. I mean, with as many courses as there are out there about growing your email list, these CRM companies they have know, them. They know the value of an email. And they you're giving them f- all of your emails. Just just handing them right over. Yeah. Right. And then all of the, that's when people get all up in arms when someone like was it Zillow? Did Zillow buy showing time? Mm. Or like dot loop? Mm-hmm. Whatever. Whenever one of these companies who maybe you would consider to be your competitor then buys something that you've been utilizing, mm-hmm. like a dot loop or a showing time or some other and software. And all of a sudden your clients start getting emails from that And they swear up and down, we're, we're going to keep them separate. We're not going to use those emails or your data to basically steal your clients. Yeah. Y'all be careful. Okay. Next up, automated lead generation. Okay. Utilize lead generation tools and platforms to automate the process of capturing and qualifying leads. Um, I will say there are some ways to automate lead generation that I think are probably good. Like if you have a freebie that you created or some sort of resource for buyers or sellers, and then you put out content that you're in on social media that says, comment, you know, guide to get my you staging know, guide or or comment weekend to get my list of weekend events for the city. Then you get their email. You can follow up with them how you want. I think that's a great automation. Yeah. Right. Do I think that all automation for lead gen is good? I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to go pay Zillow. Sure. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Next up, chatbots. Chatbots. Implement chatbots on your website. Y'all, I'm reading directly from what ChatGPT told me. So talk about self-preservation. They're like, good idea. Use a chatbot. Um, Implement chatbots on your website or social media channels to handle frequently asked questions, qualify leads, and schedule appointments. I am not going to lie. Nothing cracks me up or annoys me more than getting an automated response message if I DM someone on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're so excited to work with you. And we can't wait to follow up and bloody blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I just said cute cat or what, you know what yes, I mean? Like yes. this doesn't make sense. It doesn't mean I'm going to work with you. And this automated thing lets me know that you're, you're not, you don't you're care. Not, you're too busy to talk to me about your cat. Fine. Right. Right. I would have rather wait 24 hours for a response about my DM than yeah. get the stupid immediate automated response. That's an excellent point. Sometimes I feel bad that I take so long to respond to like a DM or something. Who cares? It, but it's really me. That's the thing. It's really me. Y'all, you can use some of these tools like social media are free, Mm -hmm. free, and they can grow your business huge. And there might be some automations that make sense. Like if you put in the post comment guide to get the, then they know or be open. I like the chat ones that say, hey, this is an automated response. Yes. Blah, 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 whatever. Like that is different than just being like, Assuming you messaged me to buy a house. Also, I don't know how it happened because I feel like Chelsea said it happened to her too. Somehow, and I cannot find the setting on my Facebook. No one ever goes to my Facebook page, so who cares? But they, if someone messages me to my Facebook business page, uh-huh. it sends an automated response. I don't know how to make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, the machines are taking over. And they I are. don't know how to make them stop auto responding. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. So that's your chat bot. And also, like, if it pops up on the um, screen, like, on your website, like, how busy are you? Mm -hmm. You can't be like, email me here, call me here. Like, right. why do I need a chat bot for people? I'm not Zillow. Mm -hmm. I'm just not. Anyway. All right. Automated reporting. Use Mm. reporting tools to automatically generate performance reports, financial statements, market analysis. I mean, like, if you're using it for, like, yeah, we have like an automated seller's report, but I don't love it. Like while they're on the market? Yeah, it'll do like a zip code. And I'm like, well, that's not helpful. Do you know how many different neighborhoods there are in the zip code? You cannot compare them all. Not helpful. Same with the, you know, computer replacing an appraiser. I'm like, these are not the same product of house. Right. You can't use this as a comparable. I know. Last one from our friend. Task automation. Of automate repetitive tasks such as data entry, appointment reminders, or listing updates using task management tools or virtual assistants. I'm like, those are still people. Yeah. That's not a software. Like, I don't even know what a task management tool is that's going to do uh, listing updates. Hmm. I, I'm not sure what that yeah. means. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. What else you got? Mm. That was know. that was it from ChatGPT and its self-preservation list. Yeah, I just think at the end of the day, I I don't mind working. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I, I like to work. But I think when we over-automate, we also, I think, we can feel our value slipping away. Mm-hmm. Like a, a machine did all of this. Like, yeah, you didn't even need me. I've used ChatGPT before to write my listing description. I actually keep doing it. It's really great because I can put in the seller top 10. I can tell it a couple of details and then it'll make the words. Yeah. In the tone of whatever I tell it to make them. But I still tell the seller. Yeah. You're still inputting everything. I'm like, hey, I use ChatGPT for this. I think it came out good. Let me know what you think. They're mm-hmm. not going to be mad that I used, <clears throat> they're not going to be mad that I used a tool. No. But I think sometimes it's obvious. Like I'll read listing description. I'm like, well, thanks, chat GPT. Right. You told me nothing about this house. You told me about every three bedroom, two bath house right. in the world mm-hmm. that could be talked about. But take the, just, I always take it and then I edit it. Mm-hmm. Make it sound like me. Make it sound less like a machine. It's a great tool. It Tools. I think you can use tools without them having to be all the way from easy button status. Like mm-hmm. couldn't we just use them as to- as tools? Um, I read an article that I want to give you some information on. Well, actually, let me start with this one really quickly. Um, Seattle-based brokerage Redfin has launched its artificial intelligence-powered home search assistant, Ask Redfin Nationwide. Are you ready? 
Home buyers using Redfin's uh, Apple app will automatically see Ask Redfin on the home's listing page after completing a quick update. Home buyers could ask questions to Ask Redfin about listing details, zoning limitations, homeowners, association or condo fees, upcoming open houses, one-on-one -on -one touring availability, local market conditions and trends, nearby amenities, and a host of other questions related to home buying. Okay. If the question requires a more nuanced answer, then Ask Redfin can provide what well, then what Ask Redfin can provide. The assistant can immediately contact buyers with a licensed real estate agent. That's the end game here. So they're using this lore of not having to talk to a person. Yeah. To get them to a realtor. That that Redfin will then get paid when that realtor sells yes. the house. So And that's tricky because you know we tell our clients in our buyer consultations, listen, I am your agent. So don't call other agents. Don't click schedule a tour. But they think, oh, well, I can just ask the question here. How much is this and condo it, it's fee? It's a slippery slope. Before you know it, you're at the front door with some man you never heard of before <laughs> who's telling you that he has to sell you the house. Yeah, just like my story. And mine. I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, on the other flip of that coin, I read an amazing article by my favorite contributor to Inman, Jimmy Burgess. Jimmy is so smart. Yeah. And he gave us a whole way to use ChatGPT in preparation for your listing appointment. Like if you're going on a listing interview, he's giving you the steps to take to use ChatGPT to win the listing. Okay. Okay. It's great. Um, basically, he's going to help you prepare a listing, listing presentation folder that shows how you plan to get their home sold at the highest price in the least amount of time using... Our friend ChatGPT. Um, I will say he isn't coming at it from a pricing angle. This is all about marketing, okay? Step one, prepare three MLS descriptions before you arrive at the listing appointment, okay? Mm, okay? So it says you can use an old, if it's been listed before, you can use an old description or just get enough details, I guess, from That's the seller. That's a good idea. But wait, listen to the prompt. I'm going to tell you exactly what he typed in. Please, to ChatGPT, this is what he said to ChatGPT. And I did hear if you say please and thank you, it doesn't better. <laughs> that is true. Please ask act as an expert real estate, act as an expert real estate copywriter specializing in writing MLS descriptions that encourage readers to schedule a showing of the home after reading the MLS description. Please rewrite the following MLS description in a way that is new, fresh, and different from this one. Paste in the old description. Or please act as an expert real estate copywriter doing blah, blah, blah. Uh, please write an MLS for a home with the following amenities. Then you just list, like if you don't have the old one. Okay, now he says at the end of that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a description. Print, okay? Set it aside. Print, okay. set it aside. Next prompt. Please rewrite the MLS description that, that I just, just did printed. in a more professional tone or whatever tone you feel is appropriate for the home. Print. Like upscale or... Yeah. Well, hold on. Hit print. Okay, now we have two descriptions. Next prompt. Please rewrite this ML MLS description in a more luxury tone. Mm. Or again, whatever tone you feel is appropriate for the home. Print. Tell the seller, I went ahead and put together three different p potential MLS descriptions for your home. I did this because if I were you, I would want to see how my home will be marketed in a way to grab the prospective buyer's attention. These three different descriptions are written in three different tones. One is in a professional tone, one is in a luxury tone, and one is in a more conversational tone. I'd love for you to read over these to see if there are any features I left out that should be highlighted and to see which of these styles of writing stands out to you. Hmm. The reason I want your opinion is because the ideal buyer for your home will likely be someone like you, and they will fall in love with this, this home the same way you did when you bought the home. That's great. So by presenting the home in a way that you like best, odds are we will be providing the details in a way that our ideal buyer will find inviting as well. Yeah, like you bought this house one time. You liked the luxury description. So somebody like you is going to buy the house maybe. And would like the luxury description. Then we pick that one. Okay. Wow. We're not done yet. Okay. That was step one, MLS descriptions. Step two is prepare an Instagram post announcing the home as a new listing. And here's what the prompt is for ChatGPT. 
please convert the listing description above. All right, so we've just done this. To an SEO, which means search engine optimization, optimized Instagram post announcing this home as a new listing available in your city area with a strong call to action to reach out for additional details or to schedule a showing. Okay, so now ChatGPT is going to give us the prompt. Okay, now you're going to read it. This is where work comes in. You're going to read it. Ensure that ensure that it's in your words. Like you like these words and then it's compliant. Okay. Add three photos. You just basically make a sample. Copy the post and put it on a separate page with the title at the top that says Instagram optimized new listing post. Print. Add to folder. Mm. I'm not going to go through every one, but step three is create a Facebook post announcing the home. Okay. Print in the folder. Create a LinkedIn blog post. Print in the folder. Create a YouTube short video clip. So we'll basically show them the script of how we're going to like do their YouTube short video. Mm -hmm. And then, and then last, ask for 25 unique ways to market the home. To chat GPT, we're asking. Now we're going to choose the ones we want and make a list and title it unique ways we will market your home. As it, it's like, don't use all 25. Use no, what, work, what, do you, what you would what, do. And what you'll actually do. What will you do? Okay. So I thought that was a great article. That's amazing it, like, advice. If, if you showed up with that listing presentation, even if you told them that you, in, you should tell them that you used AI to help make sure it was the best it could be. You will blow everyone else out of the water. I have a listening interview tomorrow. Do you want to do all this? Yeah, it might be a fun little experiment. Let's do it. And it's one that expired. Great. So we have a description. Yes. Let's do all of this. Okay. And my last comment on this was just even with all of this AI generated content, you have to know what to ask AI to do and you need to know how to present it to the seller. Mm -hmm. So tools, they're tools, mm -hmm. right? We want tools, but we can't tools really good. You can't automate you, right. but tools are good. Mm -hmm. Anything else? This was good. Did you accomplish what you wanted to in this chat? I feel like I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I know. Um, just so much good information. And I feel like this is such a trend in our in has been a trend in our industry yes, for a while. A long but time. But with AI, it is only getting more aggressive. Yeah. And I think just like things such as iBuyer, we are going to see people try all sorts of things that are short-lived. Yeah. So be very careful what you're buying into. If you're thinking about automating something and you see a new thing, mm -hmm. maybe let it run its course for six months before you buy in right. and start using it. Yeah. And, and maybe also think about all the chess moves. Uh -huh. Not just how is it helping you right now? What happens to the information you give the machine? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen if you stop using them? Like, mm -hmm. what happens in a few years if the market change? Like, think it all the way through. Not just right now. Mm -hmm. And also remember, setting this stuff up is work too. So much work. So would you rather do the work work or do the work to set up the automation? Either way, you're going to work. It's work. You have to work if you're trying to make money. You have to work. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for a toast? Yes. This toast comes from Nova Tower, and she's going to toast to Waypoint Brokers Collective. Do you remember meeting Nova? Let me see. She, well, I don't have her picture right oh. here, but oh, it's over Nova. there. Oh, Nova. Yes. Hey, I remember. She was, she was great. Okay. So here's your toast and go forth. Do be. Okay, great. <laughs> Goodbye. My name is Nova Tower. I'm a broker and partner at Waypoint Brokers Collective in Portland, Maine. And I want to toast to my business partners, my crew, my squad, my people at Waypoint. You know, we're kind of in this uncertain market and there's so many things happening at the national level that are potentially going to change our industry in the year or two ahead. Technology, it's coming for us. There's so much to be anxious about. but. You guys, your professionalism, your excellence, your support, your sense of humor, your energy. You guys keep me level. You guys keep me positive, And I freaking love you. Cheers. 
thank you so much for tuning in to the Hustle Humbly podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to ratethispodcast.com slash hustle humbly and leave us a review or drop a comment if you're listening on Spotify. If you have an episode topic or someone you'd like to toast on the show, please email us at team at hustle humbly podcast.com. Find us on social media at Hustle Humbly Podcast. Don't forget to find all of the free resources at hustlehumblypodcast.com slash resources. See you next week.